metal voice today. Whoa. Oh, my Lord. It's been so many years. Bruce Dickinson finally has released some new music. He has. With Roy Z. With me today, Jaws Lavery, all the way in Germany. Yes. Just got out of the shower. Nice. Nice. You're clean. You're clean, clean. for a review, right? Clean Bruce Dickinson. Review. After Glow of Ragnarok, this is the first track off of the upcoming album, mm -hmm. The Mandrake Project, which will be released in the new year, the exact date. Maybe you can see it there, but uh, I don't have it in front of me. Thought I had it. Anyways, this is the new track. Um, this is the first single to be taken from the album, a dramatic and epic track that introduces the world not just to the music of the album, but to the compelling narrative that forms the basis of the Mandrake Project. The Mandrake Project is a dark adult story, abuse, and a struggle for identity set against the backdrop of scientific, scientific and occult genius. Created by Bruce Dickinson, scripted by Tommy Lee, and stunning illustrations by Staz Johnson. All right, right off the bat. What'd you think? First impressions. You heard the song, you go, Bruce is back. Uh, I listened to it twice so far. Um, it's a mid-tempo, powerful song with a good chorus and a good hook. Um, it's going to take a little bit more digesting than I've had time to give it because I literally just got it. Uh, it's definitely not a road to hell or, um, you know, quick, short, fast up tempo number like some of his other solo stuff or obviously Iron Maiden it's it, it certainly indicates that we're in for a fairly conceptual piece of work the drew the dreaded concept album um thick as a brick but anyway yes it's good it's very good uh and it's going to get better with repeated listens and you know hearing a properly uh mastered file so yeah, it sounds it's, to me it sounds more like something of Tyranny of Souls than Chemical Wedding. Okay, my oh. first impression. All right. I mean, uh, we should also mention who's in the band, and of course we know that Roy Z is doing all the guitars. Tanya O'Callaghan is the bassist. Mm -hmm. Dave Moreno is drums, and Mysteria is keyboards. Are you familiar with these people other than other than Roy Z? Nope. Neither am I. Um, I kind of. I think I've been always waiting for Bruce Dickinson to come out with that perfect album. Like as much as I love Chemical Wedding, Tyranny of Souls, Accident of Birth, I don't find them as perfect albums. I think they're amazing. They're great albums, but I just feel, I always get this feeling that he's got one knockout album that will be his legacy as a solo artist. And after hearing this song, I think he's on the right track. I, I haven't heard the rest of the album, just this one song. I, I don't know. I think there's something big about the production. I think I hear, I'm not sure if it's down tuned or not. It might be slightly down tuned. What do you think? Uh, generally, generally with, when he works with Roy Z, they do take it down. You know, we will, uh, we'll see. I mean, you know, Bruce, Bruce well, likes to down tune. And he always laments the fact that Iron Maiden were like terrified to do so. And they did it on one song and the sky didn't fall. He said so. But yeah, uh, he definitely is a fan of tuning things down a little bit and making them a little bit heavier. And they even put bass strings on the guitars on The Chemical Wedding. So yes, I expect a heavy ro cabinet rumbler of a record, as we used to call them. You know, it's interesting. He sings the verse and it's very, ex he's got that soundscape at the beginning, right? That sort yes, of, yes, that build up. Yes. And then it goes into the verse. It's really, you know, that sort of neon nights, you're going to run, you're driving your car, pedal to the metal kind of upbeat sound. And then he gets into this bridge, and I was kind of thinking to myself, is he like changing key into a minor key at this point? Maybe the guitarists out there can tell me the more, uh, you know, uh, the minds of music can tell me out there. But he, it's, it's, he sort of goes in this higher register on the bridge, and he, he sounds like he's singing, I don't know, in a minor key. Good, most good heavy metal is in a minor key. That's the difference between a lot of these Sunset Strip bands uh, that were very major key kind of rock jump around the room, room party rock and then you know things like rainbow and and obviously sabbath and you know Iron Maiden, no exception the minor key is the heavy metal 
the darker so side of heavy dark, metal. Darker key, yeah. So there we go. It's a great song. W- what about the chorus? Typically, an Iron Maiden were used to, uh, you know, the band repeating the title of the song. I right? like that. But, I, I like that because in case you forget the name of the song, they'll remind you. <laughs> die with times. your boots on. If you're going to die, don't you're going to die. Think, uh, don't you think I can save you? Don't you think I'm a savior? Don't you think I can save your life? Being my favorite. Um, yes, the chorus. Like a lot of Bruce's stuff with Maiden and Without, it's just begging for a bit more background harmony and and stacking those vocals and the choruses a little bit more to make it pop otherwise they sound like verses with a singular vocal i think he's got a double in there i would love to hear that uh but usually therefore it takes a couple of listens for the chorus to really get ingrained because there isn't that big highlighter pen over top of it in the form of a ton of you know stacked vocals to go yes this is the chorus in case you didn't realize here it is but it's a great song. I, I love the chorus because to me, what you're just saying, it has those elements. Maybe it's not the, uh, you know, come on, feel the noise, big gang vocals, but it does have that. Well, Can I Kill keep- With Madness is a good example of use, of good use of harmony with an Iron Maiden. So is uh, Wasted Years. Um, there's numerous examples. They don't, they, they've never been ones that are going to overdo it and you're not going to get like, you know, uh, you know, Chicago type of harmonies in there. But... It doesn't hurt in rock to have a couple. No, of no, not at all. Chorus. Not at all. I'm just trying to say that in this chorus, I find it's a big chorus. It's a melodic chorus. It's a catch chorus, and because he doesn't have that, can I play with madness? You know, uh, uh, thirds and fourths in the chorus. He's got that keyboard in there, which brings it out more and makes it big and more melodic and more memorable and more accessible. Right. Yes. What about the guitar solo? Do you remember that part? Part. Yeah, it's good. I mean, you know. <laughs> It's a good guitar solo. I mean, you know, Royce, he's a brilliant guitar player and a great musician, and he's a good example of a of a guitar player that writes songs and riffs. I mean, like you always, I mean, again, uh, some of my guitar player friends will hate me for this, but no one cares about your chops as much as they care about the song and are you playing in key and in time. Those three things are far more important than your solo. So... That's a good point yes. because that is a great segue, and he does just that on this mm-hmm. solo. Yep. Very remind me a little bit of a rage against the machine, Tom Morello. You know, pushing that pulsating. Uh, it's got that 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 guitar effect, that pitch shifting effect on the solo, but it's mm-hmm. not a long solo. It's just short enough to your point. It just uh, short, sweet, and goes. Randy nicely Rhodes. With the song. Randy Rhodes, of course, being the ultimate in both worlds, both amazing solos and amazing songwriter. All right. So, how would you compare this to Iron Maiden, with the, with the exception oh, of the down the same, to the same way I would compare Tyranny of Souls and Chemical Wedding and Accident of Birth to Iron Maiden? Everyone sort of, not everybody, but a lot of people come out and say, "Well, these are the best albums Iron Maiden didn't make and haven't made since Power Slave or whatever." But they're actually very different. Iron Maiden have never ever been as riff driven i mean bruce that's a good point that's a good point right there bruce's Bruce's solo stuff harkens back more to like the tony iomi just really propelling the song along with a powerful powerful riff whereas iron maiden are a bit more jethro tull influence where the melody is doing most of the work which is again brilliant uh and i they're my favorite band but bruce's stuff is far more riff rhythm and riff driven uh, and that's why you get the, that big wall of, you know, powerful guitars that uh, that starts off, you know, you, you put any of them on, uh, actually, everything from Axiom to Birth onwards. Well, I think that you nailed it because this is a riff-driven song. Yes. It's a car-driving, riff-driven song, a Neon Knights-ish sort of riff-driven, King, right? I mean, King and Crimson being a case in point from Chemical Wedding. I mean, it's there's an example of that riff-driven you but you know it's it's you know what the trick was because the 90s was very much returning to the riff getting it's more rhythmical bands like tool and all that but they those bands lost all the melody that's the problem they had the riffs but they lost the melody whereas when bruce put out chemical wedding accident of birth it was riff driven which meant it could sit in the 90s in a contemporary way but he didn't lose the melody he kept the maiden melody or the heavy metal melody, or the heavy rock melody type that was very typical of the 80s metal bands, particularly the band he came from, Iron Maiden, but it was coupled with a powerful riff. 
So that's what made it work. That's why, yeah. you, you know, a lot of younger people say, well, I love Chemical Wedding. It's one of my favorite heavy metal albums because it, it satisfies that, you know, people that want that driving riff along with a big chorus that's just bursts out of your speakers and grabs you. Yeah, yeah. And you know what I also really liked about it? There's a little bit of a spoken word right before the chorus. There's a little bit of a, a break or a bridge. Yes. You know, and it and it sort of brings out the concept nature of the song. And I think this is exactly how they stated in the press release that it is yes. a, it sets it's, it up. This song it, sets up the album. Evidently, perfectly. I mean, it looks, it, all, all signs are pointing to this being a concept album, which does worry me a little bit. Because, oh. I mean, you know, Crimson Idol, amazing. Judas Priest, Nostradamus, not so amazing. But uh, I'm sure Bruce knows better. So let's let's wait and see. All right. So, what do you think about the whole uh, conceptual artwork? That you know, that blue. That I haven't that, seen it. That... I I've seen pictures of it on Facebook, but I haven't seen the. Um, I haven't held it in my hand. I can't buy it anywhere. I wanted to order it from Amazon. It's gone. My local satin store doesn't have it. So yeah, but, but you've I'm... seen you've seen Bruce sort of like you know in that. In yeah, that I've seen the cover, the, but if the some, cover that's, not, and... that's not the cover of the single. The single's got no. I'm end. talking about I'm talking about just the imagery of that we're seeing oh, on he Facebook looks like, on social uh, media, like uh, Lara Croft. Yes, Tomb yes, Raider. yes. That's right. That's Tomb Raider. Yes, yes, yes. It's like her. So so far, what do you think? What do you, first impressions? What do you think? Uh, nothing to worry about. I think we're good. I think it's going to be a decent, good very respectable presentable and perhaps even seminally robust solo album from bruce dickinson i love this song i love every part of this song i love the intro i love the bridges i love the solo i just i think this is a perfect way to start off to kick start off the campaign for his new album yes. and i think this it's, yes. it's more organic it's it's very it sounds very car driven organic still bruce is not doing his his Iron Maiden singing style is more of the uh, Bruce solo album singing style, which okay. which less operatic, I shall say. Okay. Well, I, I like them both. But, uh, but I yeah. like them both, but Good. they're different. That's all. And that's yes. it. All right. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Giles, let's, let's do our reaction video uh, pose. Yeah, I love it.